So what do you think of Anglesey then? I think it's beautiful, <laughs> absolutely stunning. I'm looking forward to where we're going now, even though I can't pronounce it. You might have to do the honours on this one. It's Llanthwyn Island. There you go. That's I, the one. I was going to say that. <laughs> Hello and thanks for joining me on another landscape photography outing. Today I'm on the beach at Newborough and we're heading down to Llanthwyn Island for some landscape photography. And I'm with the amazing Mr. Darren Knight. Darren's in North Wales, uh, the first part of his December tour. Um, he's heading off up into Snowdonia later this week and I've already taken him for a spin round to uh, show him a few photographic spots. So we're spending a day on the island doing a bit of coastal photography and I thought I'd bring him down to Llanthwyn because the light's really flat and Llanthwyn gives us a few different subjects that we can point our cameras at that aren't quite so dependent on really good light. So we're still hopeful of getting the odd image. Darren's already set up and is doing some long exposures on the uh, beach anyway so uh, I'm just kicking my heels and waiting on it. Um, it's really interesting watching another photographer at work close up, uh, especially when he's got way better equipment than you, but don't tell him that. Don't worry about it. No, 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 right. Well, I know you're here. <laughs> I wouldn't worry about it. I'll just set this camera up here for a second. So we've made it down to the end of the island and uh, after a really interesting walk where Darren's told me all about his Iceland trip. So make sure you check those out on his channel. I'll put a link to it up here. Um, but yeah, so we're probably going to spend a couple of hours here, I should think, and most likely go our separate ways. Darren will be filling his boots with all the iconic shots um, and I'll be mooching around seeing if I can find something a bit different for a change. Conditions are quite interesting. It's actually quite flat grey light but there's still quite a bit of definition in the sky and there's lots going on over the clean peninsula so I think we've got a fair bit we can use. So uh, let's see what we can find. So Darren's way over there on the headland doing his own thing and he's getting the big shots of Tour Maur, which is what you'd really want to come here for. What I'm actually quite interested in today though is something a little bit different. I really like Tour Bach or the Little Tower. I like how gnarly and run down it looks. I like that bit of metalwork on the top of it which was probably the old light. But what's working for me today, very specifically, is that backdrop where the clouds are just condensing out as the, as the air mass scrapes across the top of the mountains. And there's a backdrop of higher, darker clouds, which is creating some quite nice contrast. So what I want to try and do is find a composition that makes the best of that backdrop. But I'm shooting it from over here on this little headland because I want to use quite a long focal length so I can pull that background in and make it have a little bit more impact. So the next thing to do is to get hold of the camera, not with a tripod, but just move up and down here and see what I can do as far as a composition is concerned. So let's do that next. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is to walk down onto this little headland to uh, see how it looks when I shoot back across to the tower. 
this is the sort of angle I have in mind where I've got a little bit of that rock face underneath um, and the tower a bit of room to breathe the problem with this position as you can see over on the left hand side is there's the roof of that boathouse which as a modern structure really doesn't work for me as part of this composition now I don't want to go with any longer focal length and, and zoom in any further because otherwise I'm not going to have enough of the backdrop that I'm looking for so let's try another position so here a similar focal length and I apologize for the wobbly camera work but I'm hand holding my main DSLR for this so you can see what I'm looking at I'm at 70 millimeters and now you can see I've moved across to the left and I no longer have that roof of that uh, boathouse in the way and this is the sort of composition that I'm going to be looking at I want the tower across to the right of the image so that that impressive mountain backdrop uh, is included and then gets, get that definition in the sky. So let's get the camera on a tripod and take a closer look at the settings. Okay, so I've got this shot all set up and let me talk you through what I'm doing with this. As you can see, it's pretty flat gray light and that means that the bulk of the exposure is going to be mid-tones. I don't have any bright highlights and I don't have any really dark shadows. That makes it pretty easy to control. So I'm shooting manual, but I want to very specifically shoot one stop over. And what that means is I'm going to push the histogram as far as I can over to the right without clipping any highlights. That can be quite difficult when there's bright light to contend with. But because it's all soft grey mid-tones, it's quite straightforward. The advantage to that is that it's easier in post-processing to darken the frame down in the areas that you want to darken without degrading the quality of the image. If you take a darker image, you can easily pull those shadows up, as you've probably seen in countless images and Lightroom post-processing videos. The problem with that is that as you pull those shadows up, you'll always be introducing noise into the image. So by exposing as bright as you possibly can and pulling down, you don't introduce any noise. Now I'm shooting at about, I think, according to my lens, just over 70 mil, so it's probably 75 or thereabouts. I probably will have to crop just the very edge of the uh, the boathouse roof over there but that's okay because I have it in mind to have it as an 8x10 crop anyway but what this has allowed me to do is to feature those bright clouds right on the top of the mountains as a band sitting right behind the tower and that's what I'm interested in doing I've got a 0.9 soft grad on because I want to give it as much contrast as I possibly can in camera and then obviously I'll be looking to introduce more in post-processing to give some real punch to that definition. In doing that I need to be careful because obviously the tower with all that lovely texture on it has been slightly darkened down by my filter so in post I don't want to darken it down anymore so there's going to be some masking required so that I'm only working on the sky in effect the, the background to the tower. In all honesty, it's not the most interesting image in the world because with the best will in the world you can't do much with this light. But as a technical exercise and also an opportunity to try out a particular composition, there's nothing to stop me coming back here at another point in time when maybe I can do something with more interesting light. So, I mean, got that one in the bag. Um, by the way, settings so my settings for this shot very straightforward a simple f11 one exposure at about a second uh, at iso 100. well i don't know where darren's got to i haven't seen him for a while so i'm hoping he hasn't drowned but uh, i'm off to see if i can find another shot before packing up for today <laughs> Thank you.
Bloody hell, nearly went then. Um, right, yeah. What I'm doing with this one is, this is a shot that I've never seen before. And I'm shooting back from this vantage point, almost as if I'm a drone hovering above the beach, shooting back towards the old lifeboat house uh, and the War Memorial Cross. And I'm working with a shutter speed of about two seconds so that I can get the water sliding back off the gravel as the waves recede. And that's specifically what I'm looking to do. So I'm shooting manually, again, slightly overexposing so that I've got more detail to work with in post. In order to achieve that shutter speed, I've got a three stop uh, ND filter on and I've also got my CPL on. Uh, not for polarizing, purely because it adds another stop and a half. So I'm at about four and a half stops of darkening. It's still giving me, as I said, a really bright exposure. And that's what I want to work with in post. So it's just a matter of waiting it out now for that perfect wave to roll back off the beach. About two seconds, perfect. <laughs> One of the things you learn living in a place like this is how to spot a weather front coming in. Two reasons. One, you probably need to get out of Dodge a bit sharpish because it's going to start tipping down shortly. Second reason though is before you go, use that amazing detail in the sky. We've been dealing with this really flat grey light all afternoon, but we're starting to get some definition on the horizon and also across behind uh, Tour Mauer, which is my last composition for this afternoon, I think. Um, I'm shooting it from a completely unusual side angle, not because that's necessarily the best composition by any stretch of the imagination, but mainly because immediately behind the tower, there's some absolutely fabulous definition in the sky. And that's what I want to capture to finish off the composition in my frame. What I've done deliberately is to have a ridge of rock on the headland that I'm standing on right in the foreground, about 10 feet in front of the camera. And the reason I've got it up as high as I can get it is it's giving me that separation down onto the sand and then the headland between me and Tourmauer and then the headland that Tourmauer on gives me four planes of depth within this image. And that's what I'm going for with it. I'm shooting it at f11, uh, but because the closest element is only about 10 feet in front of the camera, it's going to be a focus stack. So probably four or five images, I should think. Uh, again, shooting manually, slightly overexposing. Um, the light is dropping quite fast now. So at f11 with a 0.9 soft grad, uh, I'm getting a shutter speed of two and a half seconds. So I'll take these exposures and then head off and see if I can find out where Darren's got to. Well, I found him. I'm all tangled up. <laughs> so, the obvious question then, Darren. How did you find it? I loved it. Really? So I absolutely loved it. I mean, I know everyone's probably photographed that lighthouse, but I haven't, and I'm so pleased I got it. I really enjoyed the small one as well. I struggled with the end image, but I put a, a little stopper on, gone for a long exposure. So fingers crossed that comes out. Brilliant. Okay, right, so it's time for us to clock out. Uh, with a bit of luck, we'll be able to get off the island without getting our feet wet. But um, if I've cocked up the tide times, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm already wet. <laughs> so uh, we'll leave it there for this one. Thank you ever so much for tuning in, as always. Um, if you've uh, enjoyed this, please give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment, tell me what you thought. Oh, and by the way, before I forget, if you haven't done it yet, why not subscribe now and join me next time? Cheers. Mm -hmm.